Hey, welcome to Bill Builds, and today we're going to be making a pint glass holder that hangs on the wall for my kitchen out of some really beautiful walnut. This walnut is really beautiful. It was provided by Ken Craft out in Toledo, Ohio. Ordered online, it came fairly quickly, even though we're during a, uh, an interesting situation, but it is gorgeous, it's beautifully cut, and I cannot wait to make this pint glass holder. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be really nice. I've never worked with walnut before, so this should be really interesting. So this is the design, it's fairly simple. It's just a box with some rabbits cut in and aluminum rods in the front to prevent them from falling out. It'll be hanging on the wall, so it should be fairly sturdy. We're gonna have a stretcher up here, I forgot to model that in. But we're gonna have a stretcher up here which we'll drill into the wall, we'll put some mollies in the wall. And it should be good. This is gonna look really good in walnut. I can't wait to see what it look, comes out like. I think the first thing we're going to do is make the general box structure, and then from there, we'll work on the shelves.
Alright, so as you saw in the time lapse, I cut out most of the wood. Turns out I had about enough. We're gonna have to make some adjustments here and there, but I have the two shelves, the bottom piece, right? So this piece, the designs kind of were a little screwed up. I don't know what happened in Fusion 360, but I wanted to make sure, I just double checked everything. So the bottom piece should be the same width as the total, uh, as, the, as the actual sides, because it should go flush, and then the two shelves go in, and then there's a back piece yeah, and then there's the back stretchers and stuff, and then that's everything. So I don't know why, I said five inches, but these want to be four and a quarter, so I just cut everything to the same width. So these are the, these are the sides, this is the bottom. The top, as you can see here, if we, like, let's, let's say we did everything, this is the bottom, right? So the bottom goes on, this would be hard for you to see, but the bottom goes on like this, right? We're just mocking everything up. So the bottom goes on like that. Imagine this is the back, right? So this faces the wall. This top piece should go like this. Right, flush both sides, fine. And then, I don't know how well you can see this, but there are pieces like this that go on. It's gonna keep everything together. This is perfect! I'm actually gonna use these. It says two and a half, but this is fine. These aren't really that important. Look at that! Okay, great. The next thing to do is cut out the rabbits for the shelving, right? So here's the shelves. You can see I cut them to be exactly the same width because I wasn't sure how long I needed to make them. So what I'm going to do now is make the rabbits and then measure later to, and then cut these to length. It's just easier that way. That way I don't have to cut the rabbits and if I screw up they're too short or whatever. So we'll cut these after we cut the rabbits. So what we're going to do the rabbits is we're just going to do it on the table saw with the cross cut sled and keep going until it fits properly. 10 inches from the top, 11 11. So that's how we're going to do this. And I brought the glass to see how it's going to be right. So it's going to be on the wall and they'll kind of slide in and this is perfect. Alright, so I got it all to fit, for the most part. Some of them are bent, some of them are... It's a little uh, unfortunate, but it gets together fine. Uh, mostly square. I think the next thing I want to do is potentially drill the holes for these. And I don't want to go all the way through, because I'm wondering if I could either put it together, like 
Stick it in both sides. Right? Or I could just do it all the way through. And you'll have like an end. This is a really tough question because I, I, I think I don't want to go all the way through. Put it about halfway and then when we glue it together, we'll just stick it in. Alright, so I've decided to do the half through holes. That way you don't see them on the outside. So I think I'm going to do... So where's the glass? Hang on. This is the shelf, right? It's going to be sitting right about here. I'm thinking like... I think three inches up is perfect. Leaves it better out here, you can put it in. So we're gonna do three inches from the shelf. So we'll do three inches up from the actual shelf mark. So let's use one, two, this is actually at three inches already. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so we do this. We put three inch, we can make a three inch mark here. Three inch mark here. We do the same here. Okay, and from the bottom here. Oh, we're gonna do it at the edge. Okay, and I think so now in right, so let's say it's here. I cannot think of this right now. All right, so, right, right, right. So that's the back edge. We want to do it like here. So I think we want to go in, I think we want to just go in a half inch. So that much, we'll go put a mark here, put a mark here. All right, there. So now, we can run these lines all the way through. Perfect, now we know where that one goes. That one. From there. Okay, so now we have our marks. So now I'll take these over to the drill press and drill those out, because these will be facing each other, right? So they'll be like this. Yep, so we'll put, uh, we'll have to drill bit over there. We'll just drill in, uh, I think about a half inch and should be good.
I've left it for a couple hours. It's now nighttime. Um, I am going to do the slots at the top here. I haven't figured out the spacing yet because, well, we have these wine, these, these are the wine glasses that we have to put in here. Oh, and turns out, okay. So if we're gonna put wine glasses at the top, this bar has to be able to be removed. So I think, yeah, because these wine glasses are really wide and they're gonna hang anyway. So let's see, that's fine. We can just pull that bar out when it comes time. So this whole thing is 27 and 20, I have a calculator over here. Okay, so 27 divided by four, six and three quarters. So here's the thing with that though. If we do six and three quarters, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna end up, so six and three quarters is gonna be here. And then another six and three quarters we're just gonna end up with two. Or like three and one offset. It's gonna be offset by one. What you need to do is divide by two, then divide those two slots by two. I think we wanna do four of them. I think we wanna do four. Because I think we can fit four, right? Because I think. Here. Let's get a piece of paper and let's figure this out. So I think the full width. Is not. This is not the most accurate, which is fine. Um, I think the full width is, all right, so as long as the spacing is greater than four and a half, we should be fine. So I think if we can fit four slots, I think that's good enough. So at six, and, so let's just do that. Let's measure out six and a quarter, six and three quarters here. All right, and then here again. I could just use like a jig or something. I just don't feel like it. Six and three quarters. Six and three quarters. So yeah, so I was right. So that's only going to give me three. So what I need to do is... Uh, oh right, so I'm dividing by four speed. So the way this math works is if we want one, two, three, four spaces, we divide by four. But really what we want is four space, four slots, right? So one, two, three, four. Right, so we have one two, three, four, that goes one, two, three, four, five. So we need to divide by five. And that will give us the number of dividers we need. So if we do 27 divided by five, 5.4, not great. Actually, we need to do less than that because we can't count the edges. Yeah, because, yeah, it's the, this space we need to divide by five because this is the allowable space of yeah, so it has, to be, it has to be five inches. So, interesting. That's actually, I didn't even think of that. Well, I did just now. So we have to divide. Okay, so here's what we're doing. If we now go five inches from the inside each, so now we do one, oh, five inches from the line. Okay, here, and now, oh, I guess I could have kept it, whatever. And then five from here. And then five from here. And then five from here. Boom. So now we have one, two, three, four lines. Let's do two and a fourth in. So that'll give us some room. Perfect. So if you do two and a fourth in, that'll give us some more room, some more leeway. These slots really aren't critical. All right, so now we have here, we drill here, 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 and here, one, two, three, four slots, and that should do it.
So a couple things I learned today. The jigsaw is terrible at making straight cuts. Or either that or I'm terrible at the jigsaw. The blade bends too much and it causes an angle. The slots are, are okay and they work. It's good enough. I rounded over the top with the router table. The slots aren't my best work and it is what it is. We're gonna continue on. I've glued the two strips in down here, and now I'm going to put in the top piece, which I've trimmed, to fit the actual box. I had to trim it because I had made it for the original design. Turns out I didn't buy enough wood. That's a miscalculation on my end. But I'm going to now glue this to the top here, and that will be the, the next step. And then the step after that, we're going to trim down another piece of wood for the beam, and that should be it. And then we'll drill two holes, sand it down, finish it with oil, and that should be good. All right, we took it out of the clamps. It's the next day, I let everything dry. Um, I'm going to now sand it to 80, and then we're gonna go to 180, probably by hand, uh, cause I have to get, be able to get into here. These rods are all removable, so I think I might have to do that just to get into the edges, but the glue up went well. Uh, the slots are unnoticeable, but uh, we're gonna give it a quick sand, and then we'll finish it with some Danish oil, and it should look beautiful.
Alright, now we let it sit for about 30 minutes. We'll wipe it off. And then we let it sit and let it dry, and that should be it. It's done. So here it is. This is the finished product. Uh, I'll show some B-roll. It looks really good and I'm very happy with the way it came out even though there were some mistakes here and there and we had to kind of change the design on the fly. That's really how most woodworking is and I'm very happy with the results. Uh, I unfortunately ordered not enough wood or I cut it incorrectly, I'm not too sure, but uh, we, cut, we made it work. I cut the square backer bar here on both shelves. I opted out not to do it up here because this will basically be just the wine glass section. You can put the bar in here and because the bars are removable, you can put the bar in here and have beer glasses up here as well. But that's mainly reserved for just wine glasses as of right now. There's the four slots, which this was one of the this was the first mistake. I shouldn't have done used the jigsaw. I should have went halfway through with the table saw and then finished it with a saw or used the router at, at some point. Uh, but that's neither here or there. So I finished it, it looks really good. Uh, for the most part, you can't really tell that there was a mistake. I filled some of the gaps with the old glue and sawdust trick. It looks phenomenal. I finished it with Danish oil. It's still drying. I'll hang it up probably tomorrow. I polished all of the aluminum bars and they look gorgeous. This whole thing looks gorgeous. Walnut is just a, a gorgeous wood and I have to thank Kencraft for uh, sending me the walnut. Uh, it, it wasn't too expensive and they, their shipping was really fast. so. Uh, I highly recommend using Kencraft. They're based out of Toledo. Uh, they're very, very good and very fast, and the wood quality was fantastic. I uh, love the color on walnut. This is the first time I've worked with walnut, and I think I have a lot to learn with working with walnut, uh, especially other exotic woods as well. I, exotic, I, I mean, I'm not too sure. I think pretty, pretty sure it's domestic here. Uh, but anyway, a lot of it was bent, and that's not their fault. That's Fact, that's just wood, right? Wood comes bent, or, or I should have just planed it a little bit more. I don't have a planer. I could have used a hand plane, but this is fine. It turned out really well. Uh, there's two holes at the top that are countersunk to mount to the wall. Basically, we'll use mollies and get that in there. Uh, all the shelves, as you saw, are attached via just the rabbits, and they're really strong. <laughs> they're incredibly strong, actually. Uh, the finish came out great. I'm just overall happy with the way it looks, and I cannot wait to put this up there and put it to use. It fits everything great and I think this will clear up a lot of our cabinet space. Anyway, thank you for watching and this has been Bill Builds.